Okay. Make sure that uh, that one is working there. Yeah, it's working. Well, Clear now? Now, there are some others who remained saying, Assalamu alaikum, ayyuhan nabi, after the Prophet's death, والسلام, and one of them is Umar. Yes. But when Abdullah Mas'ud is talking about a change that occurred after the Prophet's death, there may, there may be an observation here that Abdullah Mas'ud, he got it while Umar uh, may have not been taken it. Because Abdullah Mas'ud is talking about a thing that, that, that he changed, that he should change after the Prophet's death. So how did he get it? Unless he take it from the Prophet Clear, inshallah? Mm -hmm. See, there's a book here. We're talking today about a taqlid. Imitating, madhabiyya. Blind following. Now, the blind following has no honor at all after being described as blind following. Is there any faza'il? for blind following, the title indicates its negativeness. Let's have a look at the book here, written by um, Muhammad al-Buti. He died a couple of years ago. What is the title here? Allah la madhabiyya, nan madhabi way, akhtar bid'a tuhaddidu shari'at al-islamiyya. The most dangerous bid'ah that intimidate, threatens the sharia of Allah, the Islamic sharia. Is that it? So if a person says, I'm, I'm holding fast to the book and the sunnah, you say to him that he is threatening the sharia islamiyah? Look at the title. The title is absolutely incorrect, unwise. How come? The Prophet ﷺ said, I guarantee to you two things by which if you hold fast to, you will be prevented from dalal. So how come that means if we confine ourselves to the book and the sunnah, we are dalin? Unless we must follow the madhab. Can't be. You want to say that's my opinion, fine. But to say that this is the greatest, dangerous bid'ah that threatened the law of Allah, that's too much. He's going too far. Not only this, oh, look at that, look, 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 look. Look at that. Look at that now. The non is the alley, is the arch of non-religion following. La madhabiyya is equal of no religion following can be. Look at the title. It's too much. That's takfir in itself. If you follow madhab, that means you have no religion. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Subhanallah. Look at that. <laughs> this, this is funny. This is a Hanafi scholar. Abu Hassanat Muhammad Abdul Hayy al -Laknawi. I think all Pakistani brothers and Indian brothers, they, they've heard of him. Look what he's saying here. He said, May Allah reward him. He said, what people said in some of their fatawa, that it is permissible for the Shafi'i to become Hanafi, but not the opposite, this is an extreme fanaticism. 
extremism, clear extremism, and none should be giving any consideration. How come is it, it is permissible for the Shafi'i to become Hanafi, but it's not permissible for the Hanafi to, to become Shafi'i? That's not, uh, that's not fair. Okay. This is a fatwa in Hindiya. Okay. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Look at the top, second line. لا ينبغي للحنفي أن يزوج ابنته من شافعي المذهب. ولكن يتزوج منهم. <laughs> it is haram for the Hanafi to give his daughter to a Shafi'i to marry her. But the opposite is allowed. Yes. That's horrible. Now this guy <laughs> here in this book, al aqd al thameen is talking about uh, one person. I, I don't see his name now <laughs> he's talking about him <laughs> he said at, at his beginning time he used to be Hanafi then he became Shafi'i then uh, because he became Shafi'i because of a dream he saw that the Prophet Sallallahu oh, his name is Umar he said oh Umar come to us come to the Muslim Shafi'i come he said when I wake up I become Shafi'i and I changed. And I started to teach according to the Shafi'i Madhab. Based on what? A dream. Oh my goodness. Here. <laughs> A man called Ibrahim bin Burhan al-Din al-Halabi. He used to be Hanbali, then he became Shafi'i. And they started to call him An-Naji. The survivor. They say he, he was survived from the fire because he was Hanbali. But Allah saved him to the Madhab Shafi'i. I want to show you what's going on with these books and with this Ummah. Okay. One person's name is Ashab al-Maliki. After every Salah, Fajr, he used to be making his adhkar until the sun rises. But what is his dhikr? He keeps saying until the sun rises, Oh Allah, take the Shafi'i to become dead. Let him die. Let Imam Shafi'i die. Why? He said because a Shafi'i madhab is flourishing. So, uh, if he remain alive, the Maliki Madhab will be in, annihilated, finished. So he was making dua, what? That the Shafi'i, what? Die. You know what happened? He died two months before the death of Shafi'i. Two months before the death of Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah. How come? It's not normal. Okay. This is narrated about Abu Hanifa that he heard someone saying to him, we have forgiven you and any, everyone that follow your madhab until the day of judgment. Allah did not say that even to the Prophet Muhammad So how come that goes for Abu Hanifa? We know that this is not true. And also they say in this book that Allah let the leadership supervising be for the Hanafi Madhab until the day when Isa descends he will be ruling with the, according to the Hanafi Madhab. Among the beautiful thing with the, with Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, he has some, you know, some mistakes in his Madhab. 
Abu Yusuf, his student, and Muhammad, both they are well, special, known students for Abu Hanifa, they opposed Abu Hanifa in two-thirds of his madhab. They, diso they disobeyed him. They disagreed with him. What does this show? That Abu Hanifa disciplined them on taking the haqq as their priority, regardless of the madhab. This is the teaching of Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah. This is a beautiful word here. Narrated by Abu Hanifa, he said, No one... Oh, oh my God. Yes. No one is allowed to give fatwa by our word unless he knows where did he... Where did, we, where, where did we bring it from? That's beautiful. That's a beautiful word. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's something more. This is so beautiful. That is in Sahih Bukhari. Beautiful. Wallahi beautiful. It shows you what was the methodology, the manhaj of Imam Bukhari. Let's try to read it. It's, it's a bit slight, small. I hope, inshallah, yeah, it's good. It's good. You can see it, huh? Babu qawli Allahi ta'ala wa amruhum shura baynahum. Their affair is a matter of consultation between themselves. This is the Sahaba. And Allah ordered his prophet to, to what? To consult the companions. To consult the companions. That's a, that's a command from Allah. He said, Al-Bukhari, consultation before taking the step and things become clear to you. فَإِذَا عَزَمْتَ Then if you started to take, to initiate, then تَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَإِذَا عَزَمَ الرَّسُولُ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَمْ يَكُنْ لِبَشَرٍ لِتَّقَدُّمُ عَلَى رَسُولِ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ If the Prophet decided something, no one should be then to proceed before Allah and His Messenger in any opinion after that. Finish. وَشَاوَرَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَصْحَابَهُ يَوْمَ أُحْدٍ فِي الْمَقَامِ وَالْخُرُوجِ فَرَأَوْ لَهُ الْخُرُوجَ فَلَمَّا لَبِسَ لَأْمَتَهُ وَعَزَمَ قَالُوا أَقِمْ فَلَمْ يَمِلْ إِلَيْهِمْ بَعْدَ الْعَزَمِ and yeah, the Prophet in Uhud, he was consulting his companions. But when he put his la'ma, la'ma is the militant kind of uh, hat. You know, the limit, the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what do you call it? Huh? Khoda, khoda, yes, yes. Militant hat, we call it in Arabic khoda. When he, when he put it on him, that means no one after that is allowed to interfere in a decision. Because when he put it, that means he took decision. Look at the adab. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala disciplined the companions of his prophet. Subhanallah. And the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam consulted Ali and Usama with regard to what Aisha radiallahu anha was accused about. And Ali radiallahu anha he said, look, there are many women, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not confine you with one, with her. So there are many women, and Aisha didn't like that from Ali. And the Prophet did not accept, and he was not inclined to what Ali said. But Usama said something else. He said, 
this is your family, this is your wife. So, uh, yeah, Ali said, radiallahu anhu, uh, wow. That was too much from Ali radiallahu anhu. He said to him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not confine you with her only, and women are, there are many multiple women, and ask the concubine, she will speak to you the truth. Aisha kept that in her heart, but she was not saying any word against Ali, radiallahu anhu, abadan. But that was a sort of, you know, a thorn in her heart. Now, until the Quran was descended, then those who have accused Aisha radiallahu anha were, um, uh, were whipped, given uh, lashes. No. Yeah, Allah. Yeah. <clears throat> Look what he said. وَكَانَتِ الْأَئِمَّةُ بَعْدَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَسْتَشِيرُونَ الْأُمَنَاءَ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْعَلِمِ Then the imams, the leaders after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to be consulting the eminent, trustworthy people among the people of knowledge in many issues. So they will take the easiest thing among the different various fatwa. What does it mean to take the easier? Does it mean that the scale is what is easier or to be haq and easier among the two haq? Because the Prophet ﷺ used to be, when he was given option between two things, to be taking what is easier unless it's not permissible, it's not halal. So if it's not halal, he used to be the most distant one from it. This is the way. Today, no, some people said to you, I think this matter in Al-Fiqh al-Shafi'i is easier, so let's go to the Shafi'i. Because it suits their desire. That's haram. And they say, اختلاف أمتي رحمة the, the, uh, the, the disagreement between my nation is a matter of mercy. A disagreement. That's not true. The hadith, there is no hadith like that at all. Second, the, different, the, 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 um, the differing and the disagreement is not a matter of mercy. No, it's adab. If Disagreement is a matter of mercy. What about agreement? What do, we, what, do we, what do we describe the matter of the agreement now? If disagreement is a matter of mercy, that is not true. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلَا يَزَالُونَ مُخْتَلِفِينَ He's talking about people. They are always in disagreement. إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكَ Except those whom your Lord granted mercy. So, Agreement is mercy, according to the ayah. How do we go to the fabricated hadith, ignoring at the same time this ayah, that people are continuously, they keep in disagreement, except those whom Allah granted mercy. Who are those who agreed? So agreement is mercy, not the disagreement. Right. Look, I like that. He said, the leaders, when the book and the sunnah become clear to them, they never bypass it, exceed it to anything else. When the book and the sunnah in this matter are clear, obvious, khalas. They don't take any other way. Do you understand me, inshallah? Alhamdulillah. 
وسلم, taking the Prophet وسلم, as their model in this issue. ورأى أبو بكر قتال من منع الزكاة فقال عمر كيف تقاتل وقد قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أمرت أن أقاتل الناس حتى يقولوا لا إله إلا الله فإذا قالوا لا إله إلا الله عصموا مني دماءهم وأموالهم إلا بحقها When Abu Bakr decided to fight those who declined paying the zakah after the Prophet I want to show you how how the devil takes people emotionally they were shedding tears. Wallahi, zakah we used to be giving it to the Prophet وسلم, we're not going to give it after him. They are so sad for the Prophet's death. And because of being sad, they said, we're not going to pay the zakah. We want the Prophet only to take the zakah from us. Did Abu Bakr excuse him? No. Did he accept their justification? No. He decided to fight them. So Umar radiallahu anhu said to Abu Bakr, how do you fight those people for not giving the zakah? While the Prophet sallallahu said, I was ordered uh, to fight people until they give testimony that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is the messenger of this uh, uh, his servant and messenger. So if they said it, then they will be sparing, preventing their blood and their property, except by what is due right of the shahada of La ilaha illallah. Look what uh, Abu Bakr answered him. He said, Wallahi la uqatilanna man farraqa baynama jama'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi, this beautiful word. It's against those who take part of Allah's command and they leave other part of Allah's command. Pick and choose of, what, of Allah's orders. Pick and choose. You know the pick and choose. Look what he said. I swear by Allah, I'm going to fight the one who segregated between what the Prophet collected. Look at those people today when they say to, to you, not every innovation is misguidance. Didn't they segregate what the Prophet made it one? Look what Awakir is saying here. He said, Wallahi, I'm going to fight. Those who separate what the Prophet did not separate. Allahu Akbar. Wallahi, it is, you know, I did, I did not really understand this or uh, picked, I did not pick this benefit until now. He said, I swear by Allah, I'm going to fight the one who differentiated between what the Prophet gathered. The mean of Allah. There's another nation, he said. Are you hitting a hitter in Jahriya so smooth in Islam, O Omar? That shows something important. The strictness of Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr used to be very smooth to the extent that when he read the Quran, he keeps crying. You don't understand what he's saying because of his, his crying. Umar was so hard. But at that moment, Umar was so smooth. And Abu Bakr was so hard or strict? No. He was not hard, he was strict. And there is difference between being hard and being strict. You don't need to be hard to be strict. It's not true. The evidence, Abu Bakr is softer than Umar, but he was more strict than Umar. And also, and that also shows the great knowledge of Abu Bakr and his, uh, his understanding of the way, the sunnah, the behavior, the reaction, the decision 
of the Prophet ﷺ. This is the knowledge. You don't get su such knowledge in other masajid. They don't focus on these issues. Unfortunately, Wallah. Then he said, uh, Bukhari, continue. ثم تابعه بعد عمر فلم يلتفت أبو بكر إلى مشورة مشورة إذ كان عنده حكم رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في الذين فرقوا بين الصلاة والزكاة وأرادوا تبديل الدين وأحكامه الله أكبر how beautiful is this statement he said Abu Bakr did not give any consideration to the matter of consultation مشورة after he had the ruling of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his hand with regard to those who wanted to separate between salah and zakah and they wanted to change the deen and its rulings beautiful statement of bukhari this is all in the comments of bukhari the hadith here it says illa bihaqqiha that means, except by the two conditions of La ilaha illallah. Then Abu Bakr said, Wallahi, giving the zakah is a part of the conditions of La ilaha illallah. Wallahi, if they refuse to give me a container of water, which they used to give to Rasulullah wasallam, I will be fighting them even because of this. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ بَدَّلَ دِينَهُ فَاقْتُلُوهُ Whoever changed his religion, then kill him. He's speaking to who? Addressing this command to who? To the people when they have their imam. Because not anyone on the street can take this fatwa or verdict or apply it. He said also, وَكَانَ الْقُرَّاءِ Every word of Bukhari is beneficial, wallahi. This man, Bukhari, is a great man. Allah is a great man of Islam. Just 250 years after the Prophet's death, and Bukhara in Samarkand, in Eastern Europe today, we had such men who has the great wisdom. What did I mean by the wisdom? Hmm? Not only this. Allah talked about the book and the sunnah and the Quran, but the word sunnah of Rasulullah is not mentioned. But it was consisted under the word hikmah. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ the Prophet used to be teaching them the book and the hikmah. What is the hikmah? The sunnah. The sunnah turns your mind to become a wise mind. Have you seen the car being fixed like this? Hmm? The Quran and the sunnah. Fix the mind. The greatest reforming of, the, of your brain, your mind, is the book and the sunnah. You know the word refurbishing? Hmm. The book and the sunnah are the two refurbishers of your mind. Ay wallah. Look what the Bukhari said. وَكَانَ الْقُرَّاءَ أَصْحَابَ مَشُورَ أَصْحَابُ مَشُورَةِ عُمَرُ كُهُولًا كَانُوا أَوْ شُبَّانًا The Qurra'a, the reciter, the memorizers of the Qur'an, used to be the special consultant people there, yani just like what you say to the MP, huh? members, members of the parliament. The members of the parliament at the lifetime of Umar, they used to be the Qurra, the reciters of the Quran. وَكَانَ وَقَافًا عَنْدَ كِتَابِ اللَّهِ And Umar used to be Stopping a stopper person 
with regards to the book of Allah. That means if he heard a command or prohibition from the Quran, he used not to, to bypass it. No. Here where he stops. This is how Allah granted them victory. We're not ready for that victory. And we don't deserve it now. You know what they say? <laughs> ya Allah, we say la ilaha illallah. The kuffar don't say la ilaha illallah. Why don't you grant us victory, Ya Allah? In a very naive way. They don't know about the sunnah of Allah, the ways of Allah. Allah knows best whether you deserve it or not. Believe me, if Allah knows that we deserve it today, Allah will not be delaying the victory one second later. But He knows that until now we don't deserve it. We're not ready for it. It's been rated in Sahih Muslim that there's a man reciter of the Quran. His name is Al-Hur ibn Qais. Al-Hur ibn Qais. His nephew, his, uh, his uncle, he said to him, my nephew, I know that you are close to Muhammad, uh, sorry, to Umar. This, one, this is when Umar was the Khalifa. Can you let me get in? He says, sure. I'll seek permission with Umar for you to come tomorrow. So, al harb bin Qais, yeah, today we have our leaders, they have the best consultant for him are Christians or Jews. Or maybe Henry Kissinger himself, they pay him per hour, $100,000 per hour or even more. Henry Kissinger. And he will be giving them suggestions that causes more destructions to the Ummah. Who are those, the closest selected people to Umar? Reciters of the Quran. So al harib bin Qais sought permission with Umar for his uncle to enter his assembly. So as the man entered, the assembly of Umar, what did he say? Eh, hey, Umar, la tu'ti al-jazal wa la tahkumu bil-adl. La tu'ti al-jazal wa la tahkumu bil-adl. Oh, Umar, you don't give what people deserve to be given and you did not judge fairly between people. He wanted to enter the assembly of Umar to accuse Umar. Oh my God. What if that word was, say, was said, what if that word was said to Putin? What do you expect this man will be? Will be killed. And Umar was about to hit him. Then this man, memorizer of the Quran, he said, يا خل... يا... يا أمير المؤمنين إن الله عز وجل قال خذ العفو وأمر بالعرف وأعرض عن الجاهلين and turn away from the jahilin give them no consideration and this one he didn't, he didn't say and my uncle to الحر this man he does not give any respect to his uncle anymore and he said, this one is among the jahileen. The narrator said, Wallahi, when Umar heard this ayah, he stopped, he was about to give him a hit. Because he used to be a stopper. Where the ayat of Allah stops him. Where the ayat of Allah stops him. Did you understand that? 
كان وقافا عند كتاب الله يا yeah. this you know if we did not take anything else but this one والله it's sufficient this is filled with benefits فوائد and it shows how was Bukhari, how great he was and very valuable man to the Ummah. And the, the things that he had done, still benefiting the Ummah today. Some people believe, you know, the narrations of Bukhari, 99% of the narrations of Bukhari are Ahad. That means it's not Mutawatir. Do you know the difference between Ahad and Mutawatir? Kamal? Un, uh, countless, countless kind of narrators. And it's very difficult that they all agree on fabricating hadith. This is mutawatir. I had no one, two, or three, or five narrators. I had, we call that I had. Yeah. Ibn Hajar said, since the Ummah accepted those two books, all the Ummah, since the time they wrote their two books, Bukhari and Muslim, and until today the whole Ummah is accepting their book, that makes this book stronger than Mutawatir. Stronger, not stronger than Ahad, no, no, stronger than Mutawatir. This is great. I think we should stop here, inshallah. We continue tomorrow if you like. Because I did not even start the lecture about taqlid and madhah. I didn't begin yet. But this is very beautiful and it is sufficient for today. Tomorrow we continue. Yes, your question. All of Ahadis in Bukhari and Muslim, all of them are authentic? Yes. Can no. Albani, he had some <clears throat> slight uh, reaction against maybe two or three hadith. At Dara Qutni before, Imam Dara Qutni before, he had something like 70 hadith against Bukhari, doubting their authenticity. Then that's why Ibn Hajar in the preface of his book, Fathul Bari, the first volume called Hidayatul Sari, Ila Sahih al Bukhari. This is the first volume of, as you see it here, where is Fathul Bari? Yeah, downstairs. Yeah, yeah. Let's see if they, if it's here, the Hidayatul Sari. This is Fathul Bari. Let's open the first volume. No. The Muqaddimah, the, the, the first volume, I think it should be here. It should be here. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I found it. That's it. See? Now he's written here, Hadju Sari. Hadju Sari, Muqaddimah, the presentation, the preface of Sahih, of Fathul Bari. In this book, In this book, Ibn Hajar, he discussed, he was discussing, refuting Ad-Dara Qutni with regard to the 70 hadith that he doubted. And he proved them all authentic, one by one. The whole volume, as you see, is refutation to Imam Dara Qutni. Yes, you may find some criticism with two or three hadith. This is normal. This is not the book of Allah. No matter what people do, they won't be accurate as the accuracy the Sahaba had with their collecting the Quran. 
But also, having two or three doesn't change it to become weak book. It is still authentic. I can't mention them. I'm not ready to. I'm, I don't remember them now. But some other people also refuted Sheikh Albani in his attitude against those two, three hadith. So we can't say, we don't say that uh, it should be 100% because the way that the book was collected must be different than the way the Quran was collected by the Sahaba. Because Zayd, radiallahu anhu, he used not to accept any ayah, but he put a condition that two Sahaba witnesses, they give testimony that they heard it from the Prophet ﷺ after the previous ayah, one by one. And that was a great job with Zayd radiallahu anhu. Okay? Well, yes, barakallahu We stop here, we continue inshallah tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.